It's Mo. It is time for another basement box books unboxing haul and unhaul. So I have been going through the books in my basement that we've had in my basement since I moved from Brooklyn to New Jersey. For my whole entire life I've been a reader and my whole entire life I have been a book acquirer as far as picking up books, especially free books from stoop sales or cheap books from used book sales and things like that. And over the years I have accumulated many many books. When I lived in Brooklyn all these books lived on like one bookshelf and I would just go in there and pick them and I'm sure I had hundreds and hundreds of books but it never felt overwhelming because they were like in a separate room and I didn't read the way I read now. It was more of just like an accumulating fun thing to do. Now I have less limited space than I had in Brooklyn but I feel more of a space crunch with all the books I have. I have over 600 books on my working physical TBR, the TBR of books that I look at every day that I want to read from, that I'm actively excited to read from, and I have hundreds and hundreds of books in the basement. That's why I started this project. I wanted to go through the books that I had in the basement. Now that I know myself a little bit better as a reader, and now that I am trying to pare down the books that I have in general. So every for you month we pick a couple of boxes up from the basement. I don't remember what's in any of them. Most of them have not been opened in years and years, but I go through the boxes, we decide if I'm going to unhaul the book, which is the ideal thing that could happen with these books, or if I'm going to keep the book and put it down in the basement. There are some books that I do end up putting on my TBR, my current TBR, because they I decide I want to read them. And then there are some books that end up on my red shelf because when we moved, some of the books that I've already read got mixed in with unread books. So today we have a box that I had to like decant from another box because one of the other reasons that I want to go through these books is because they're all in cardboard boxes and our basement does get really damp so we have had some boxes with mold but luckily knock wood not in a long time so a lot of the books that we've had are perfectly fine there was only a few that were really badly mold damaged the first book that we have is T.S. Eliot the cocktail party I believe this is a play yes I have read some T.S. Eliot I read mostly T.S. Eliot's book of practical cats or whatever it is the cats book the cat poetry book but I we also had another book of T.S. Eliot poems. I really do like T.S. Eliot from what I know of it and earlier in these boxes we found The Wasteland which is a super famous long T.S. Eliot poem. The cocktail party we're gonna keep out we're gonna put on my plays section. I have been building a little TBR of plays but I haven't read very many of them so this is a good one to put there. The next book I see is The Mysterious Benedict Society and The Perilous Journey. This is by Trenton Lee Stewart. I have such a weird relationship with these books because I read these middle grade books. I read the first and second at least. Um, I think when I was like a young adult, like in my late teens or 20s, and I really enjoyed them and I have been considering rereading them. The last box I think we got rid of the first one. So I am going to unhaul these for now. I could always get them back if I need them. I just don't read middle grade that much. I think this is a really good middle grade series as far as I know though. The next book that I see is Laurie R. King The Game. I was collecting all the Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes books because I was reading a lot of them at one time. I haven't read them in over 10 years now. So there's something that I would like to explore. I've been keeping all the Mary Russell books and Laurie our King books that I found because I did really enjoy her writing. But this one I have a feeling that we already saw this one in a box so I will double check my spreadsheet that I've been making and if we already have seen this one I will unhaul it and if we haven't it will go back in the basement. The next book is The City of Bohain, a novel by Kevin Barry. I have no idea what this is. Oh, it's got a map though. That's cool. I do like a map. This is a not too far future, 40 years in the future from 2011 when this book was written look at Ireland. Let's see, it says it combines Celtic myth and a Caribbean beat, Fado and film, graphic novel cool, and all the ripe inheritance of Irish, lit of Irish literature to create something hilarious, strange, beautiful, and startlingly new. Um, I think this one can go in a try a chapter. I've been doing that with some of these books. I'm not super interested in this one, but if the writing is really cool, it might be a neat idea. In Praise of Barbarians, 
Essays Against Empire, Mike Davies, or Mike Davis. Come on, get up here. What? What are you crying about? Why are you crying in my ear? Why are you yelling in my ear? The people can't see you. Come over here. They want to see you. They want to see you. All right. This does sound really interesting. It looks like it's something that my husband was reading maybe in college. There's some <laughs> bookmarks in there from the Hall of Fame, which looks like it was probably his. I think we're gonna keep this one and put it down in the basement. It seems to be essays concerning empire and like what's wrong with like America and colonization, the next step of colonization, which is empire. So this one's interesting. I don't necessarily need it on the TBR but we'll put it in the basement. I have Juliet Dove, Queen of Love by Bruce Coville, a magic shop book. I used to really like Bruce Coville. I'm not keeping many middle grades, so we can let that one go. Then we have Marcel Thoreau, The Confessions of Minecraft Holmes. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Our friend gave us a lot of Sherlock Holmes books, so we have a lot of Sherlock Holmes books. Some of them were mine originally, some of them my friend gave me. I have been reading some of the ones that I pulled out of these basic box books but mostly I have been unhauling them because there's just no way I can get to them with all the other books that I want to read. This is a Ugandan author which makes me a little bit more interested in that. I think this is another one that could go in a try chapter. Dress Your Family in Corduroy and Denim is by David Sedaris. I think I've read most of this book. I did go through a little bit of a David Sedaris phase because a friend of mine really liked David Sedaris but now I'm not as interested in his work so I have been getting rid of all David Sedaris books. Oh my gosh, now we have another copy of Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. This is a beautiful old copy. Absolutely love this one. I have talked about this before because we found at least three copies of Waiting for Godot, but possibly more in these basement box books. My father and I recently went to see a performance that contained some works by Samuel Beckett, which was really interesting. I've never seen or read Waiting for Godot. It's one of those ones that I do really want to see or read. I will keep this one out and put it in my plays and then I'll put the other copy of Waiting for Godot back in the basement. This is Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, a classic. I have never read this. I think we have another copy of this on the shelf. This was probably my husband's book and probably the one on our red shelf is his as well because I've never read it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back in the basement. But good to know that I have a copy of that in case I want to read it. Oh man, okay. Here we have Chang and Ang by Darren Strauss. This is a novelization of the conjoined twins Chang and Ang, which were a very famous circus act for a while. This one I know that I got because I was really into circus workers for a long time. I was reading a lot of fiction about circuses and circus workers. So this is one that I imagine is quite dated and possibly fairly problematic, but I am super intrigued. I'm going to put it back in the basement though. A few boxes ago we found book one and book two of Vampirates. I read Vampirates, which is a middle grade series, when I was young, a long time ago, and I remember really liking it. And it's, it is a middle grade series that I did want to return to just because I remember really enjoying it. It's about vampire pirates, so like, of course. This is book three. Book one and book two I know I read and I put on the red shelf. Book three I don't think I read. I think I just got and I never did read it. So this is one that I might want to read at some point, but I'm not going to put it on the TBR. I am going to put it back in the basement. This book I know I've talked about since joining booktube, or at least I've looked at it since joining booktube, because this is one I think I found in like a little free library or something, and I think I did a try a chapter of this. I decided that I wanted to read it. This is like a independently published work though, I think, and I know one of the pages fell out. I'm going to go ahead and keep this. I'm going to keep it in the basement. I just remember it being interesting so we can just keep it. Oh this book is such a cool cover. This is The Wicked Wicked Ladies in the Haunted House by Mary 
Chase. This definitely seems to be a vintage middle grade or young adult. I'm going to keep this, but I'm going to put it in the basement. Vulture Peak by John Burdett is a series that is about a American detective, I think American or British detective in Thailand. And I have read the first book and the second book, I think, Bangkok 8 and Bangkok Tattoo. I see Bangkok 8 is on my red shelf. So this is one that now, as a reader, I think I would probably find fairly problematic and a white author writing about Thailand might bother me, but I do remember really liking Bangkok 8, so I feel like I would need to reread Bangkok 8 and then decide on this one. This is a maybe. Love this cover as well, The Further Adventures of Haley's Comet by John Calvin Batchelor. This is like a very 70s book, and I think I picked it up because it just was very 70s to me, and it seemed really fun. There's also some like illustrations in here. This one still seems really interesting to me. I have no idea what it's about. I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to put it back in the basement. This is another amazing cover. I do remember packing this one up in the last few years. It's Philip Jose Farmer, The Grand Adventure. Gorgeous, gorgeous vintage cover. I keep all Philip Jose Farmers because I really like him as an author, so we will definitely be keeping that one. Here we have a Shadow in the Shadow of Gossam, a novel by Stephanie Pintoff. This seems to be about a detective in New York who something happens to and he moves to the countryside. This could be really interesting, but I have so many books, especially so many mysteries that I'd love to get to that I think this one can get unhauled. Nobody Move, a novel by Dennis Johnson. I've never read any Dennis Johnson, but I have always really wanted to. I remember being kind of torn about this one when I put it in the basement. I'm going to keep it in the basement. A Horror Novel 666 by Jay Anson, who is the author of The Amityville Horror. This, I think, was just a cover grab, and because it says 666, amazing. Thing. I got this early in my booktube career when I wasn't reading a lot of horror and I remember putting it in the basement because I was interested in it but when was I ever going to read it so I think I'm going to actually take this one out and put it on the TBR because I might get to it sooner now that I love horror. I used to read so much Carl Hyacin. He writes quirky mystery books about Florida and the residents of various Florida places and towns. Skink is one of those characters so I was super happy to find this. I think I found this at a book sale. But again, I haven't read Carl Hyacin in so many years. Like, I don't know how I'd feel about his books now. I'm actually current re currently reading a book about Florida and a Florida detective, and it is really dated, and it's like kind of testing my patience. It's not a Carl Hyacin book. It's a different book, but I think I will keep this for now and put it in the basement. Here is a vintage copy of Joseph Conrad, The Secret Agent. I think the last box that we opened, I also found a copy of The Secret Agent. I think I actually still have it over there. So I'm going to compare the two copies I have, and if I like one better than the other, or if one is a better vintage cover, I will keep that one and get rid of the other one. Very cute vintage book, The Animal Family by Randall Jarrell, de uh, with decorations by Maurice Sendak. So a very cute little book, and then with very cool illustrations by Maurice Sendak. I have to check on this one. It might go on the TBR. A Practical Guide to Ruins, The Uses in Divination and Magic. This is a reference book, so I'm going to put it on the reference shelf. Andre Norton, The Zero Stone, has a cat on the cover, which I love. I don't know if it has a cat in the book. Seems like a pretty cool vintage sci-fi. I'm going to keep it in the basement. F. Scott Fitzgerald's Flappers and Philosophers. I do really love F. Scott Fitzgerald, but I'm going to keep this one in the basement. Norm Norman Mailer, The Armies of Night. We went through a brief Norman Mailer phase where we were picking up a lot of Norman Mailer books. I read The Fight by Norman Mailer and I really enjoyed it. This one can go in the basement. The official Star Trek trivia book can go in the basement. Robert Johnson, The Eye of the World can get unhauled. Someone will really want this. I will never read this. Anne Rice, The Tale of the Body Thief is in the Vampire Chronicles, I believe. I have been wanting to reread those all. I think I read like 
three or four in the series previously, or four or five in the series previously. I might have read The Body Thief, but I really can't remember. I really only remember Interview with a Vampire, which I did reread recently since joining Booktube, and The Vampire Lestat, which I would like to reread, and I've been meaning to for the last couple of years. This one can stay in the basement. This cool 70s vintage book is The Last Laugh, a completely new collection of funny epitaphs. This is just funny things that people have put on their grave. I'm going to keep this one out and put it on the TBR because that seems like one that you could get through, almost like poetry. Another horror that I put in the basement is The Exorcist. This one is going to stay in the basement. I have P.G. Woodhouse Meet Mr. Mulliner. I do love P.G. Woodhouse. I've only ever read the Jeeves and Worcester books, but this one can stay in the basement. Kurt Vonnegut Look at the Birdie, which is unpublished short fiction, and it looks like there's a couple of doodles from Vonnegut. I'm going to actually go ahead and put this one on the red shelf because I have a fairly extensive Vonnegut collection and some of those are red, some of them are unread. Here's The God Emperor of Dune. My husband has read all of these books, so I think I can put this one on the red shelf as well. I've only ever read the first Dune book. Ian Fleming's The Man with the Golden Gun, another one that I don't know if I'll like. I've never read any Ian Fleming. I've never read any of the James Bond books. The dust is getting to me, but I keep this in the basement. My mom's favorite book is The Once and Future King. I've never actually read that. I'm surprised we haven't found that in the basement yet. Maybe we have. This is a sequel to that, The Book of Merlin. Definitely keeping this one putting it in the basement. Here's a Star Trek The Next Generation book. It is Q Strike, so it all has to do with Q. Definitely keeping this one, putting it in the basement. This is one that, like, my husband's more likely to read than I am, but worth having just as a cool object even if no one ever reads it. Here is Runaway Ralph by Beverly Cleary. I actually think I bought this for someone else and then never gave it to them. We'll put it in the basement. And next we have Alien Creatures, which is all about movies and things, shows with aliens. This can go on the reference shelf. So if you're keeping track, that was the 23rd box that we've gone through, and I am putting five books on my TBR, two books on the red shelf, two books for Try a Chapter, many books are going back in the basement, two on my reference shelf, three that we have to look into, five that are getting unhauled. Not the best ratio of keeping to unhaul. I would prefer to be unhauling many more books in this project. The first book is Sherlock Holmes, Volume 1. This is a graphic novel. Very cool, but I don't love the artwork, so that can go as an unhaul. Darwin's Secret, a novel of the Amazon by Richard Hoyt. Very pretty cover. It seems to be a writer who usually writes like a thriller and espionage, and this is like a mystery set in the Amazon. I'm not super interested in this one. I am going to unhaul it. The next book had a bunch of papers in it, which is interesting. This is Turn of the Century, a novel by Kurt Anderson. Never heard of it. Does not seem interesting to me at all. But inside of there was these little notes, and it says, thank you for your order from God's Net, which uh, sounds a little ominous, but apparently the ordering of this book went to help homelessness and marginalized communities in Kentucky. So that is cool. I am going to unhaul this. What are you doing? Come over here. Come here. This is a very cool title for a book, A Guide for the Perplexed by E.F. Schumacher. This seems to be some sort of self-help book. Is it worth keeping just for the cover? Probably not. I'm going to unhaul this one. Here's another Norman Mailer book. We can put this in the basement. This one is really interesting, A Walker in the City by Alfred Kazin. I do remember not getting this book, but I remember having this book on my TBR for a brief moment because it is all about someone walking in Brooklyn. I think it's a fictional book. I think it's a novel, but it's about like a person who likes to walk, and I love books about walking. Usually they are nonfiction. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put it on the TBR. Next is The Danish Girl by David Ebershoff. I thought I had a different copy of this with the movie cover on it because this was made into a movie, and I think this book is fairly controversial because it is a cis male writer, but writing about someone who was 
transgender. I will have to look into this. This is going to go on the maybe pile. Then we have Existentialism from Dostoevsky to Sartre. This one is an amazing cover. Going to keep this, going to keep it in the basement. Bleeding Edge by Thomas Pynchon. We'll keep Thomas Pynchon books, but in the basement. Psychic Self-Defense and Well-Being. Got to keep it just because it's awesome. And I'm going to put this on the reference shelf. Then I have The Battle of New Orleans, Andrew Jackson and America's First Military Victory. This is one that I think I picked up from a little free library and I did want to get because it's about New Orleans. So I think I'm going to keep this one, but keep it in the basement. Here is Pete Seeger's storytelling book. I do remember picking this one up as well. I think I got it from a little free library or a library sale. This one probably is more for my husband than it is for me. I will definitely keep this, gonna keep it in the basement. Tibetan Peach Pie by Tom Robbins is a Tom Robbins that I have not read, but I have a lot of Tom Robbins books on my red shelf, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in there too, just because it keeps them all together in the collection. Another Kurt Vonnegut, another Kurt Vonnegut that I haven't read, same thing, we're gonna keep it on the red shelf so it stays in the Kurt Vonnegut collection. Donald Westlake, put a lid on it. I have read one Donald Westlake novel, and it was a Richard Starkey novel. I thought it was okay. I am ready interested in reading more Donald Westlake, but I'm going to keep this one in the basement. Here's Murder as a Fine Art by David Morrell. I think this is like a Victorian set novel. I'm going to unhaul this one. And very last in the box is four short novels, The Fox, Love Among the Haystacks, The Ladybird, and Ca The Captain's Doll by D.H. Lawrence. I think that I've actually read The Fox before, but I can't remember, so I am going to keep this one and I'm going to put it in the basement. Okay. I'm keeping an eye on things. Box number 24 only had 17 books in it. Seven are going in the basement. Two are going on the red shelf. One is going back on the TBR. One is going on reference. One is a maybe. And five are getting unhauled. So not the greatest again, but not the worst. So that was another installment of my basement box books unboxing, haul, and unhaul. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned here. Let me know if you think I should prioritize any of them. Thanks so much for joining me and Chips today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!